the Joe Rogan experience. I'm going to do a podcast with him with subtitles in Spanish, and I'm bringing him up here on Friday. What? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I got really? a company to do it for me in Spanish with subtitles. And then I'm going to bring him up here on Friday, and we're going to have a three-way about Cuba Whoa. and what it was like to rest on the whole thing, if you don't mind. Whoa. I don't know if you mind. So I'll do mine about subtitles just in Espanol. Okay. No de Cuba, como tú te callaste, so no, it will not clash with you. Dude, the you, three of us together would be the greatest you, podcast yeah, ever. Because I can interpret, and you would be, would be, uh, it would be a real MMA. You could really talk yeah. about on the hooks and Dude, Russia. And that's a fantastic early training idea. in Cuba and where they shipped them. Because they ship you off when you're a young kid. They that's do? what a lot of people don't know. Yeah, they look at you and they go, uh, you don't have a choice. They look at you and they go, do I say luchadero? And that's it. Now they, they take you at a certain age and they, or they either send you to Nicaragua or Russia. And you train. And that's why a lot of Cubans are judokas. Because they go to Russia and learn judo. Wow. So he's going to tell you how they ship them off. And they don't just tell your mom, like, we're taking them tomorrow. That's it's always been interesting to me because the Cubans and the Russians in particular were always thought of as being very technical it's Really the Russians Russians are super technical. That was what uh, a lot of people attributed George St. Pierre's success in wrestling You know George didn't wrestle in college or in high school uh, But he trained with a bunch of Russian nationals in Montreal and apparently phenomenal wrestlers They have this incredible wrestling program like when you see when you see Nurmagomedov the way he mauls people inside the octagon, like what in the fuck? Like that is like a, a perfect example of that like style of super hard, super technical wrestling. They're so good at it. There's so many. You see, you know, you see Lomachenko used to be a wrestler. There's no. a video of Lo Lomachenko. It looks like he's doing sambo. It looks like he's got uh, like a gi on, and it's him and some other cat, and he's like 11 years old or something like that. So his father put him in everything. His father made him, you know who Lomachenko is, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. One of the best boxers ever. Like, literally one of the most technically beautiful to watch boxers that's ever lived. But this guy used to wrestle, too. Like, his this is, uh, I don't think this is it, is it? Yeah. Does him, okay. Is this him wrestling with somebody? Yeah, this is one now where he can still do this shit. This is, like, pretty recent. Like, he showed some of his wrestling moves. But the other one was him when he was a little boy. Like, he's really technical, man. He, he knows how to wrestle. This is legit. Like, when you see the way he's moving his body, he's not faking that. He's done that a bunch of times. And, yeah, this is, a, this is one when he's a little kid, man. <laughs> it's crazy. It says Greco-Roman wrestling, but they're wearing a gi, so I'm not exactly sure what it is. But he gets his kid and uh, gets behind him and sends him for a ride. So he was he's always been... An amazing athlete like in every I think there's there's something to that there's something to his father had an idea it's a crazy idea his father took him out of boxing and put him in a dance for like several years so a, a Ukrainian traditional dance style apparently they were talking about it on one of those HBO shows for like four years I think it was the HBO show but for four years I think he just danced you imagine that his father's like you want to learn how to box you got to dance and now nobody's got footwork. Have you ever seen him, Joey? Yes. Have you seen like his highlight reel? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, insane. Yeah. It's insane. It's insane. Jamie, pull up a Lomachenko highlight reel. Because my daughter goes to ballet, and eighty percent of the class is Russian. So I was thinking about it yesterday. I was watching the movements, the last parade movement, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! If people did ballet, could you? And I was thinking of GSP. Like you know me, I'm like right. GSP probably fucking does ballet. Uh, like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, would. That's what be people good for do. You. It's great footwork. This guy is the wizard of footwork. It's crazy because he's like right in front of you, but he's one step ahead of you at every turn. Like he knows what you're going to do right while you're doing it. Wow. He's moving in a way that you can't move. He's in front of you and then he's not. It's crazy. Like he's the, one of the most technical boxers I've ever seen. An, uh, it just an amazing stylistic achievement like what he can do with his body his style is totally unique i mean everybody a lot of guys have done it a lot of guys have moved in now a lot of guys have done it but he's doing it at such a high level such a high level that it makes people confused guys quit in their corner they're like what in the fuck and i really think a lot of it probably had to do with his father's cross training 
and particularly with the dance. I mean, think about how effortlessly he goes, like, steps around guys. I mean, he's got some incredible control of his feet, but it makes sense that, like, you would learn how to move your feet in a specific way that weren't, the way you weren't learn how to move your hands in a specific way, right? Like, think about a guy like Floyd Mayweather, right? His hand combinations with his upper body, they're so precise. It's like, da, 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 right? But with his legs, is he as precise? Is he as precise moving with his legs as he is with his hands, or is he 60% or 70% or 80%? Lomachenko is probably por perfectly proportioned for his style with his ability to move, but also, also his ability to box and hit you well. He's got both things going on at the same time with next level angles. So that's what I was saying Fuck. to you. When you're young in Cuba, they pick you. It's not like you wake up and go, I want to be a wrestler. No, they look at you and go, you look like you could go go wrestle. And, like, what I was hearing back from them in the early 70s was, like, they just took you from your family. They, uh, right. And that was part of your training. You know, your, then they put you in their gobierno, you know, where you train in, like, their army. Do you, have you talked to y'all about this? To, you will? Yeah. Like, no, we've discussed what this thing is. I already have graphics on the podcast. Whoa. So I figured that I'd put them up and we'll do a podcast in Spanish with fucking subtitles like an English film, like a like a Jolini movie, whatever, one of those movies people think are unique. Okay, yeah. here you have it. That would because be his his English is too rough for me. And I know right. what he's trying to say and the frustration in his face. He's trying to say I love you. I love you. He, Michael Bisbing. So now he did a tape the other day of him in Cuba waiting for Bisbing in Cuba. Oh, no. He went to Bisbing Cuba. Bisbing went to Cuba? No. You, Romero's back. Uh, right. See if you he's can find it. He's in Cuba, it. but what is the? See if you can find Michael it. Michael Bisping. Oh, it's it's he's I he's love nuts. You. He's nuts. He's nuts. Well, he's fighting Rockhold now. Which is a tremendous fight on the tenth, right? That's a crazy fight. That's a crazy a fight. Very good fight. It's a very good fight. <laughs>